Hello, Key here, and welcome to my Let's Play series of Dark Souls. And I'm just going to kick it off by saying welcome. This guide, this, well I'm going to say guide, but it's really a Let's Play series, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to give plenty of tips for new players, and just walk you through the game. So, to start with, choosing a class. What you want to do is choose a class that suits what sort of character you want to have at the end of the game which makes sense. So, I mean, if you want to be a mage, then you really should be picking Sorcerer, because they have the highest intelligence and attunement. But, um, I'm going to go with Bandit, because I'm going with a Strength character, and pretty much other things such as Master Key, the Gift, right. You want to choose the Master Key because it's really useful. The other ones, aren't so useful at all. Physique doesn't matter. Obviously cosmetic things don't really matter. You may be wondering where I got the name Latoria from. That's just I uh, put a I got a random name generator and just clicked it and that's what it came up with so I'll go with that. Anyway, let's start. By the way, right the way through this I'm gonna give advice and I'm not gonna watch the, the cutscenes so that's getting skipped straight away. And here we are. So first off you want to pick up the key and go through the door. For this um for this gate, I'm gonna assume that you read all of this. Because I really can't be bored running around reading everything. So anyway, let's leave them alone. So this is the Prepare to Die edition of the PC with the new content in it and I've already played through most of it and I can say it's a good port. I mean, it's, it's a, you can tell the game's not built for PC. I tried it with a mouse and keyboard, guys, bit of advice here, please don't play it with a mouse and keyboard, you're at a horrible disadvantage. I've, what I've done is I've gone ahead and plugged in my PS3 controller and used a 360 controller emulator so that the PC thinks that my PS3 controller is a 360 controller. So first thing you want to do is walk through here and see that guy up here? He's gonna jump down. He's a scary guy. So when he jumps down, don't bother fighting him because you have a broken sword. So you want to just run away through this door. And you see that stopped them. Now, bonfire cell is a sort of checkpoint. When you reach a bonfire, you know it's going to be safe. It resets all the enemies. That gives you your health back. And it pretty much sets you up on your way. So I'm going to equip a shield. As I said, I'm going to assume you know the controls, because if you don't know the controls, then this guy isn't going to be much help to you. You're better off learning the controls first. And I've got the fat roll already. Awesome. Right. I'm going to try and alleviate that somehow. Let's see. Okay, now you see this equip load bit. You want to ideally keep that below 25%, so you can move around better. So let's try this. Alright, that's great. Um, let's get rid of these. Just pretty much just take off armor until you can do the fast roll. You run up here, watch out for the boulder. That breaks the ball. Um, I don't want to waste time by talking to this guy, so I'll just kill him. He's gonna die anyway. And he gives you your Estus Flask and a key. Now the Estus Flask is the item which you use to heal yourself throughout the game. You can't really... Like... And the only way to replenish your Estus Flasks is to visit a bonfire. 
increased the effectiveness of Estus Flats, which I will show you in later parts. Okay, that was a good start. Right you. There we go. Rolling is important. Rolling is probably more important than blocking in this game. That's the long and short of it pretty much. Okay, you see this guy, if I wait here long enough he's just going to jump up, but I'm not going to do that so I'm just going to jump off and do the fall on attack on him, like that. There's a tutorial that explains that, like, just before you pass through the fog gate. Now, for this guy, he's the tutorial boss, he's not that hard, you just need to stick in at him. Hopefully you won't get hit like that, <laughs> I feel like in a day now. Just keep rolling to the side. And pack away. There you go. Nice and easy. Okay. So he just gave me a key that lets me open up this door. Which is, you know. This is me leaving the tutorial area. So if you think about it, that boss was kind of a test. For people playing the game to make sure you understand the controls and can play the game. If you can't beat that boss, there's no point in moving any further forward, so don't like get someone else to beat it for you. You really have to just move along. <laughs> Let me just tell you what happened in that cutscene that I just skipped. Um, a raven just picked you up and chucked you down here. <laughs> That's me. Okay, so let me get on to the next aspect of this game. When you get to a bonfire, you can level up using souls. Each monster you kill gives you an allotted number of souls. Souls are used for everything in this game. You can buy items, you can level up, and you can upgrade items. So, spend your souls wisely, I guess is what, is what I'm saying. Now, as I did say, this is kind of a let's play series and a bit of a beginner's guide because I'm giving you information right the way through it, but I'm going to play it in a way that I find fun because if I'm not finding it fun then obviously I'm not going to do it. So I'm not going to play it the way I would recommend other like beginners to play it, if you understand me there. I'm, I'm just going to go crazy really. So I'm running down here to collect some items that I might need. There's a winged spear, which is a good beginner weapon. And this big sword, which is the weapon I'm going to be using. fire resets all the enemies. What this is, is I think it's like a trace of a miracle that someone's cast in this area. Miracles are, are, are like spells and what they do is they'll increase the power of your miracles if you choose to cast any in that area. Which I suppose is handy. So here's the weapon I just picked up. I need 24 strength and 10 dexterity to use it so it's telling me you can't use this weapon. But I'll come up with a way. First, meet the dexterity requirement, and then put points into strength. So I've got 10 dex, 16 strength. Hopefully that'll be enough. Right, still coming up the cross. Now, what I've just did there is I've held the weapon with two hands. What this accomplishes is weapons with too high a strength can be used by someone who doesn't have quite enough strength to use it. So if you use it in two hands, which would kind of make sense, then you can use a weapon that is heavier than you can carry in one hand. So like if I use it this way, it's telling me, no, can't use that. But if I hold it in two hands, 
There we go. Fantastic. Now, I just want to give a quick shout out before I go on to the second part. Um, I've got a friend, Jamie C, who is currently doing a Let's Play series of Demon Souls, which is the prequel to this game. Well, spiritual prequel, I guess is the word. Um, and it's a PS3 game, which means I won't be able to do a Let's Play series of it because I'm on the PC. So, what I'm saying is, if you want, go check him out. He's got some good videos there, he's a good player. That message must be an error. I don't understand that. I have no idea how I could be Gravelorded at Firelink Shrine. <laughs> so yeah, Jamie C, I'll put the link in the description, check him out. Um, and I'm going to end this part here. The rest of it, I'm going to just break up into parts later. So, it'll, it'll just cut out at random times. So, very rarely will you see me welcoming you at the start of a video, like the next one. So, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next part.